On this episode, I want to share some great advice on how to build a career as an artist, author, or a musician. And I'll do that by telling a story about how I published one of my most successful books and the unique approach that has allowed me to make a full-time living in the arts since 2001. Sound good? Stay tuned. Hi, I'm Bob Baker, author of The Empowered Artist, The Guerrilla Music Marketing Handbook, and many other titles. Welcome to my channel, where I share inspiration and career advice for musicians, writers, visual artists, and creative entrepreneurs of all types. If you don't already, please consider subscribing to the channel. There's also an audio podcast version of The Creative Entrepreneur that you can subscribe to in iTunes, Stitcher, and wherever you consume podcasts. So in this segment, I'm going to share an excerpt from an audiobook that I published called The DIY Career Manifesto, and it sheds light on the story of how I published one of my books and a philosophy that I embrace that I think is highly responsible for being able to carve out this unique path, being able to make a living in the arts and doing it on my own terms. And I think if you embrace the same philosophy, you'd have a lot better odds at making an impact and making money with your art, with your words, with your music, whatever that creative form of expression is for you. So take a listen, and then I'll talk to you on the other side. Principle number 12. Question everything you've ever been told about building a career. Since the word unconventional is included in the subtitle of this book, the topic of this section shouldn't surprise you. One thing I have never been accused of is taking the safe, predictable path, and I've always found that trait to be an asset, not a liability. That's why I suggest you question everything, and I mean everything, you've ever been told or thought about building a career. To be clear, I'm not talking about being an anarchist or automatically dismissing everything that has gone before you. It's good to be aware of the many routes others have taken to a profitable DIY career. Some of them may even resonate with you and serve you well. The danger comes when you have knee-jerk notions of what you're supposed to do. If you find yourself blindly heading off in a direction without a solid reason, stop and ask yourself, Am I doing this because I've always been told this is the step I need to take? Or am I doing this because I have decided this is the best route for me and my unique situation? I already shared the story of how my first book was published in the early 1990s. Two or three years later, I was ready to birth another book baby. But I had no interest in going with a traditional publisher again. Nor did I want to do what most authors did back then— put together a detailed book proposal, seek out a literary agent, and endure a parade of rejection letters from publishing companies. Nope, that didn't seem like fun at all. So I decided to put my next book out myself. By this time, I had written and published dozens of monthly columns for my music magazine. I took about 15 of the best columns, updated them, and compiled them into a book I called the Guerrilla Music Marketing Handbook. It wasn't pretty. The first edition was published in an unimpressive-looking, bare-bones, three-ring binder. But at least I put it out there, another example of a minimum viable product. At first, I averaged only a few sales per month, but the response from readers was immediately favorable. The Guerrilla Music Marketing Handbook was one of the early titles that didn't focus on how to get a record deal and instead encouraged musicians to take a more independent, hands-on approach to marketing and career development. Taking the Unconventional Path When it came to promoting the book, I steered clear of most traditional strategies. For one, I never pursued retail distribution in bookstores, something most authors consider to be a requirement. Instead, I decided to use the Internet as my primary exposure and sales tool. My goal was to bypass the standard channels and take my message directly to the people who needed to hear it the most, the working musicians who were my readers and buyers. I felt the same way about other knee-jerk book sales channels. I didn't concern myself much with sales to libraries or schools. I didn't pursue mainstream book review avenues. 
I experimented with putting some of my titles in local music stores on a consignment basis, but I quickly found the whole process of tracking sales and collecting payment to be a big pain in the butt. I also wasn't concerned with making a big splash with the launch of the Guerrilla Music Marketing Handbook. Book publishers typically allot a two- to four-month window during which they heavily promote a new title, similar to how record labels and movie studios handle new releases. The idea is to strike while a book is still considered fresh. I, on the other hand, took a long-term approach. I started small and watched the book's popularity slowly grow over the ensuing decade. Every couple of years or so, I added to and updated the chapters, improved the format and design, and continued to get the word out via the internet and periodic speaking events. The results? Over the years, the book has seemingly taken on a life of its own through word-of-mouth recommendations and widespread exposure on the internet, along with nice perks like a cameo in a major motion picture, the Guerrilla Music book has become my best-selling title and is largely responsible for me living my dream of being a full-time author. That one self-published book led to six more paperback books, as well as an entire line of info products and services geared toward musicians, authors, and other creative people. Ebooks, special reports, audio programs, online courses, consulting work, and more. But here's the funny thing those traditional things I avoided early on ended up coming to me organically. Once I had an audience and a modest reputation, my fans started requesting that libraries carry my books. Publications started requesting review copies. Instructors started using them in their college and university courses. And in 2004, someone who discovered the book while searching online contacted me about possibly using it in a movie by Paramount Pictures. That led to the Guerrilla Music Marketing Handbook appearing in a classroom scene in the movie The School of Rock, starring Jack Black. Here's an important thing to note about this question-everything philosophy. At every turn, I did consider what the traditional, common logic dictated. But ultimately, I had to ask myself, what feels right and doable for me at this time? And more important, what is my big picture goal with this book and my overall career? The mistake I see so many people make is asking a question like, how can I get the attention of this book publisher, or this record label, or this art gallery, or this agent? Is that really your ultimate goal? To impress a gatekeeper? A better question might be, how can I reach more people with my message in a way that will allow me to make a difference and make a living at the same time? That's a more powerful question. And when I asked it years ago, it led to answers that took me down roads that weren't the status quo. I saw the traditional gatekeepers and distribution channels as roadblocks, not much-needed assets. So I explored paths that took me directly to what I wanted. Many of them didn't work so well, but I found enough actions that did work well enough to get me where I wanted to go. So, where do you hope to ultimately end up with your DIY career? What steps do you think will get you there? Are you choosing this route because of a knee-jerk reaction or because it's truly the best path for you? So there you go. And from now on, I truly hope that you question everything you've ever heard, everything you've ever thought about building a career in the arts. Just stop yourself the next time you have that knee-jerk reaction to do something and ask, is this something I'm doing because I think I'm supposed to or because everybody else does it or it's what I've always heard? Is it truly the right decision and the right path for you? And only you can answer that question. Asking it is the first crucial step. So I'd love to hear from you. Uh, does this work for you? Leave a comment below. And another great way to stay in touch is to get on the Creative Entrepreneur VIP list. I'll even give you a free course called 30 Ways to Become an Empowered artist. It's on Udemy and features three and a half hours of video training sessions. It's real easy to get. Just go to promoteyourcreativity.com. That's promoteyourcreativity.com. And that and some other goodies are all yours completely free of charge. 
And if you'd like to consume more of the DIY Career Manifesto, it is available on Amazon and Audible as both an ebook and an audiobook. What the heck? Get them both. That way you can read it and listen to it, depending on what kind of mood you're in. And if you'd like to support my ongoing efforts to educate, inspire, and empower creative people around the world, please become a patron. Just go to patreon.com slash Bob Baker to learn more. All of these links will be in the show notes and in the video description below the video. Thanks for all you do to express your creativity and share it with the world. I'm Bob Baker saying so long for now. Thank you.